KBS TV exposes a recording of North Korea's Lee Yong Ho saying the regime's satellite rocket launches are actually meant to eventually carry nuclear warheads. The presidential office convened a National Security Council meeting to discuss measures against Pyongyang's imminent missile launch. And analysis of the North's track record shows that the missile launch could take place just before the late Kim Jong-il's birthday, which is February 16th. Hello and welcome to News Today on KBS World. It's Thursday, February 4th. I'm Luke Clary. North Korea has long been accused of disguising its intercontinental ballistic missile program under the pretext of peaceful space development. KBS TV has obtained a recording of former North Korean military official Lee Young Ho saying that the goal of the regime's purported satellite rocket launches was to eventually carry a payload of nuclear warheads. When Kim Jong-il died in December 2011, his funeral car was escorted by former chief of the general staff of the North Korean army, Lee Yong-ho. At a lecture for high-ranking officials held the following year in Pyongyang, prior to his purging, Lee explained the actual reason behind the North satellite launches. <laughs> In other words, the real reason behind Pyongyang's disguised rocket launches was to develop intercontinental ballistic missiles loaded with nuclear warheads. At the lecture, Lee also expressed Pyongyang's determination to counter the U.S., regardless of whether or not the North was recognized as a nuclear power. The recorded voice of the former number two man of the North Korean regime serves as further proof that Pyongyang has no intentions whatsoever to give up nuclear missile development. Why is North Korea pushing ahead with its planned missile launch this month? Analysts say that politically Pyongyang aims to threaten the U.S. On the technical front, it wants to refine its technology to carry heavier warheads through tests. Here's more. North Korea possesses a large arsenal of missiles that are capable of reaching the entire Korean peninsula. However, its tests of intercontinental ballistic missiles with a range of over 10,000 kilometers are aimed at directly threatening the U.S. The North's Workers' Party newspaper, the Rodong Shinmun, revealed its motivations by stating on Wednesday that the current situation is not favorable for the U.S., and a shift in Washington's policy is the only solution. Given that the launch pad used in the latest missile launch is 67 meters long, up from the previous 50 meters, the length of the rocket is also presumed to be some 40 meters, longer than the 31-meter Unha-3. It appears that North Korea's intent is to increase the missile range by enough to attack Washington on the east coast of the U.S. Accordingly, Pyongyang will have secured ICBM-level technology, at least in terms of the range, if it succeeds in its second launch of a 10,000-kilometer range missile. Secretary General of the International Maritime Organization, Im Gi Tech, says that North Korea's satellite launch notification is an act in violation of the organization's guidelines. The IMO Secretary General explained that a satellite launch notification should be given to the country in charge of accident management or rescue calls, but North Korea did not notify the local oversight country of Japan, instead directly contacting the IMO headquarters. He stressed that North Korea has not been observing this guideline since the regime first launched its Taepodong missile in 1998. Back in Seoul, the presidential office convened a National Security Council meeting to discuss measures against Pyongyang's imminent missile launch. We bring you more. The presidential office on Wednesday convened a National Security Council meeting to discuss measures against North Korea's missile launch and announced the government's stance shortly afterwards. 
The statement warned that Pyongyang's announcement of its plan to launch a long-range missile at the time when the UN Security Council is deliberating sanctions against the regime was a direct provocation against the international community. 한반도는 물론 이 지역과 전 세계의 평화와 안보에 대한 중대한 위협으로서 국제사회로부터 혹독한 대가를 치르게 될 것임을 엄중히 경고한다. Shortly after Pyongyang's announcement, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs held an emergency conference call to discuss countermeasures. It was presided over by the minister and attended by UN representatives. 다양한 측면을 염두에 두면서 미국, 일본, 중국 등 관련 당사국들과 긴밀한 협의를 진행하고 있습니다. The military has started to deploy national intelligence assets such as Aegis destroyers and airborne early warning and control systems to track North Korea's missiles. The Chinese government has asked North Korea to exercise restraint, expressing grave concerns about Pyongyang's impending missile launch plans. However, Beijing said that it cannot stop Pyongyang from launching a rocket. Here's more on China's diplomatic dilemma. China expressed grave concern over North Korea's plans to launch a satellite. Beijing refuted North Korea's claims regarding its rights, saying that while Pyongyang is entitled to utilize space peacefully, it is currently under the restriction of UN Security Council resolutions. However, the Chinese government appears to be in a dilemma, as it will be unable to take action should the North push forward with the satellite launch. Nonetheless, Beijing criticized the U.S. for causing the prolonged deadlock over the North Korean nuclear issue. China stressed the importance of resuming the six-party talks, noting that U.S.-led pressure against Pyongyang drove the regime to conduct its nuclear tests. The Japanese government announced that it will interpret the North satellite launch as a long-range ballistic missile test and deal with it accordingly. In spite of all this international outcry, North Korea looks poised to forge ahead with the missile launch. The question turns to when. An analysis of the North's track record shows that the launch could take place right before Kim Jong-il's birthday, which is February 16th, barring inclement weather. North Korea has launched long-range missiles five times so far. Three of them were launched after 2009 in the form of provocations after sending prior notices. The Unha-2 rocket launched in April 2009 and the Unha-3 rocket fired in April 2012 were launched on the second day after giving prior notice. Unit 2 of the Unha-3 rocket was launched in December 2012 on the third day of the notified period. Analysts say that this time Pyongyang will likely fire a missile at the beginning of the notification period, which is from February 8th to the 25th. What's especially noteworthy is that three years ago, Pyongyang conducted its third nuclear test four days before its largest national holiday, Kim Jong-il's birthday, on February 16th. Observers say that ahead of Kim Jong-il's birthday this year, the North might launch a rocket to celebrate the holiday and bolster solidarity. However, the notification period is longer this time, 18 days instead of the previous one week. That means Pyongyang will likely adjust its missile launch according to reaction from the international community, such as new sanctions. The U.S. forces in Korea announced that American Special Operations Forces representing the same teams that carried out assassinations of key figures in the Iraq and Afghanistan wars recently arrived in Korea to participate in a joint ROK-U.S. military exercise. The Special Forces soldiers have been carrying out such operations as the removal of weapons of mass destruction, as well as the assassinations of key enemy figures and leaders of the 9-11 terrorist attacks. This particular announcement is notable as it is very unusual for the U.S. forces in Korea to disclose the visit and drill schedule of the special forces. The U.S. and Japan have the weapons to intercept a North Korean missile, although it would not be an easy task. South Korea, on the other hand, does not have such a defensive capability. Here's more. 
North Korea's plans involve launching a long-range missile toward the Yellow Sea. However, South Korea will be unable to intercept the missile even if it is successfully tracked down. This is because the North Korea missile will fly at an altitude of 150 kilometers over the Yellow Sea. But the Patriot missiles deployed by the South Korean and U.S. military forces can intercept only up to 40 kilometers. The situation is different in Japan, which has already ordered the destruction of the North Korean missile. Japan has deployed Patriot missiles in major cities and dispatched an Aegis destroyer to the East Sea, equipped with the SM-3 interceptor missile, which is capable of hitting ballistic missile targets at an altitude of 160 kilometers. The U.S. possesses a multi-layer defense system against ballistic missiles that could reach its mainland, such as the SM-3 interceptors and the thawed battery at high altitude, and Patriot missiles at lower altitude. The U.S. has also launched development of a defense system that can destroy ballistic missiles using unmanned aerial vehicles equipped with laser artillery weapons. The plan for a new railway that can shorten travel time between Seoul and Sokcho to less than two hours is in the pipeline, as well as projects that would cut commuting times for Seoul and surrounding suburbs. Let's take a look. A high-speed railway project will be underway to connect all major cities in Korea in under two hours. High-speed railways will be expanded and new railways for trains traveling over 250 kilometers per hour will be built to narrow the gap in local rail services. First, High-speed rail service areas will be expanded by continuing the second phase construction of the Honam High-Speed Railway and connecting lines. Also, a project aiming to shorten the commute time for Seoul and surrounding areas will proceed in earnest. And the Seoul Metropolitan Regional High-Speed Railway will be built between Songdo in Incheon and Cheongyangni in Seoul. The Ilsan subway line will also be extended to Unjong New City in Paju. By 2025, it will take only 13 minutes to travel from Ilsan to Seoul Station, 23 minutes from Dongtan in Hwasong and Songdo in Incheon, and around 8 minutes from Uijeongbu. A new movie starring Huang Jung-min has opened in theaters. Wang has become the nation's most bankable star by appearing in such high-grossing films as Ode to My Father, Veteran, and The Himalayas last year. This and more coming up in today's showbiz section. A hot-tempered prosecutor is framed for murder and sent to prison. Inside, he meets a handsome con artist with a long record. The two pair up to prove the prosecutor's innocence. It's great fun to watch Kang Dong-wan playing a suave grifter who can pass himself off as a student studying in America with barely passable English, as well as a prosecutor and a gangster. The mischievous Chipmunk brothers are still adorable and their performances have become even snazzier. The chipmunks perform music and dance routines flavored with each region's characteristics as they travel across the United States. Many dishes that Koreans enjoy during the traditional holidays are cooked in oil. But there are said to be different kinds of oil suited for different cooking methods. Today, we have tips on what cooking oil goes best with which holiday foods. Cooking oil is an absolute necessity when preparing holiday dishes. Depending on the ingredient, there are many different oils out there, including olive oil, grapeseed oil, canola oil, and so on. But the best type of oil you should use depends on what you're making. 
발연점이 높은 포도씨유나 카놀라유 같은 경우에는 튀길 때 사용을 한다거나 아니면 고기 전, 생선전을 붙일 때 많이 사용을 하시고요. 발연점이 낮은 올리브유, 들기름, 참기름 같은 경우에는 무침용이나 아니면 가벼운 전용으로 많이 사용을 하고 있습니다. Nutritional value also differs among different types of oil. Canola oil is rich in unsaturated fatty acid and suppresses oxygen radicals from forming in the body to help prevent aging. Vitamin E and provitamins contained in grapeseed oil facilitate the creation of cell membranes and also serve as an antioxidant. Meanwhile, olive oil, rich in oleic acid, helps to lower blood cholesterol levels. Sesame oil in particular is often heavily used in Korean cuisine. It's effective toward preventing hypertension. Perilla oil helps to prevent cardiovascular and immunological diseases. Now, in frying dishes, the frying temperature is key. And how to check the temperature is rather simple. 튀김옷을 기름에 떨어뜨려 보았을 때요. 바닥에 닿아서 바로 떠오르면 160도. 3분의 2 지점에서 떠오르면 170도 바닥이나 중간에 가라앉지 않고 표면에서 바로 떠오르면 180도 이상이 되겠습니다. Seafood and meat should be fried quickly in high temperatures of around 80 degrees Celsius to prevent the juice from leaving the protein. What happens if we use a type of oil with a low smoke point in frying? 발연점이라는 것은 프라이팬에 부었을 경우에 옅은 연기, 푸른 연기가 이제 발생을 하는 시점을 얘기를 합니다. 이 푸른 연기는 아크롤레인이라는 성분이 있기 때문에 우리 몸에 들어와서 암을 유발시키는 원인이 되기 때문에 음식도 탄내가 나서 좋지 않고요. 건강에도 좋지 않은 성분입니다. Cooking oil is a kitchen essential. Using the right kind of oil for the job will result in better tasting food and protect your health. And now we'll take a look at the markets, followed by the world weather. And that's it for this edition of News Today. Thanks so much for being with us. We'll see you again at the same time tomorrow. Goodbye.